you need to also ensure that you're not taking original copies to the embassies because they will just trash it. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So my name is Charles Madhavuchi and today I'm going to be sharing a video with you on how to study in Europe, how you can start up your application process, how you can also submit the necessary document for the visa. So I would suggest um, you stay tuned, watch the video, put a comment on the comment section and um, be sure to ask me questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Hmm? Bye bye. See ya. Um, welcome, guys. Um, so my name is Charles Marwabuchi, and um, I live in Tangri, in um, Estonia. So today I will be guiding you on um, your, the travel path to Poland. So first thing first, getting the admission, you need uh, a valid passport, a passport that is not going to expire anytime soon. And so for um, your admission parts to Poland, you can also apply, you can apply for a BSc, you can apply for a master's. Now the documents at which you need to apply for a BSc, you need Sorry, your Charles. English Sorry. test results. Sorry, Charles. Yeah? Sorry? Can you, can you, can you please allow some people in? I heard some people are waiting in their room. Oh, okay, okay. Just yeah. allow them in. Yeah, because somebody's writing me, she's upset. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, please. Uh, wait, when you're talking, you just check, always check it because they'll be joining. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. okay. Sorry. So, uh, uh, let's see, is there anyone coming in? No one. So, as I said, um, you need um, a valid passport that is not going to expire anytime soon. And um, for a BSc, Basically, it is um, important for you to get your English test results. You need your English results. You need your WIREC and also your passports. Then um, applying for a master's, a master's program, you also need a valid passport that is not going to expire in about um, a year and a half time. You need your, your, um, your English test results you need your first degree certificate and also your transcripts. So these are um, some of the important documents you need to apply for, um, for the admission in Poland. In, you could apply for um, schools in Warsaw and some other cities in, um, in Poland because there are different schools in Poland and um, you can also apply for, um, for these schools. So basically, um, you can also apply for this school called um, WSB University. So it ha it's a university that has uh, different um, campuses in different cities. But for now, they don't have any admission in, um, in Warsaw. Okay, someone else is coming in, sorry. Thanks. I hope guys, you can hear me very well. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. Thank yes, you. For I the, can. Thank you, Taiwo, for the confirmation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so please, I, I would also <laughs> want us to ask questions. Okay. If I'm speaking too fast, you also let me know. Okay. So as regards to the transcript, is it the what is it? This could I will send it or we can send it ourselves. Is, yeah, that's a, that is a very nice question. So for some of the people I um, I assisted, they, they had issues with this um, question. So basically, you need to get a transcript from your school yourself. But the school would yes. never want to give you the original copy of your transcript. Hey, baby, please meet me. Okay, good. So I muted that person. So as I was saying, this school, that's your, 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 your former school might not give you the original copies of the transcripts. So what they could do is 
give you a copy, like a printed copy of your transcripts you need for this application. Does that answer your question, Sarah? Yes, 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 yes. And what about the IELTS, the English test also? What is the, I know it should be academic, but yes. what are their band? What is the band they're looking at? Um, you need um, about from 5.5 for each. That's the English, the, the speaking, writing, um, reading and thereabouts. You need 5.5 for each. Okay. Okay. Good. So now moving ahead, after you're done getting this um, admission, you know, so <clears throat> there are also documents you need to uh, present to the school because the school asks you to also scan some of your documents while you wait to apply for, for the visa. So before then, you need to send um, a copy of your diploma certificate that you ensure you don't send the original. Um, so you need um, a scanned copy. Someone else is coming in. Innocence, we have innocence coming in. So you also need um, to scan your English certificate. You need to scan it, but this might not be necessary. It might not be necessary for you to send them your certificate. Your certificate. So you also need to scan um, some of the questions, like um, the school sends you a document and uh, it has some questions in Polish and also in English. So you need to print this document out and then um, respond to the questions because they would want to get to know you. So you need to respond to the questions and um, scan the ones in English and respond to the questions and forward it back to the school. So this is how it is being done. So you also need to scan the, the first page of your passport where you have um, your, your, your photo and then also your ID. So this you need to do. So you also need to send them a photo, that's um, a passport photo. You also need to do this as well. Are we together guys? Yeah. Okay, perfect, good. Yeah. So now the student visa, so things you need to know uh, before you apply for the student visa, going to Poland. So as of September 10th, 2020, so um, the Polish embassy, they started um, a telephone appointment. So you have to, you have to call beforehand you know, to get an appointment before going to the embassy. So one thing you also need to know is that the phone is very, very active. Like it's very active only on Thursdays. And um, from Thursdays, 9 a.m. up until 3 p.m., these are the only available times you can call to book an appointment. So basically, you don't just go to the embassy, you book an appointment, you know, over the phone. And uh, as soon as this, um, as soon as you go through, you're able to go through, like you book the appointment, then um, they would ask you to come, they would give you a, a specific date at which you would come. So I would also want you to know that um, after the available slot is filled up. Um, the telephone line goes off. So if you're not able to, to get through to the embassy before 3 p.m., you can try the next Thursday or either um, get more information on um, the Polish website. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, yes, absolutely. Perfect, perfect. Um, so do we have any questions here? Any questions? Not at all. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm also applying to Poland anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, concerning the uh, schools, uh, do they have a portal just like um, studying in Estonia where one can check different schools they are interested in applying for and uh, probably apply to the school of their own interests? Like okay. they have a specific portal, or is there any link you can send to us that we can uh, try to click on and start looking for schools we are interested in? Very good. So the thing is, um, as far as I know, Poland, um, I don't think they have a portal, just like studying in Estonia, you know? So 
you can apply directly to the school. Um, there's this school um, I mentioned earlier, WSB University. So all you just need to do is go to their website, Google them out, go to their website, and um, it's, it's a private university. So you go to their website, every information you need um, consigning, getting an admission. And one other thing I would also want you to do is getting admitted to this university is very, very easier if your documents are correct, like it's much more easier. So you just need to do the right, the right thing, read out all the information, you know, go through the admission processes. You need to, first of all, create an account on their um, website, then submit your documents. So that's basically what you need to do. Um, when applying for these universities. So I don't think they have um, a specific website um, where all the universities come together and then you have to apply. So you just need to go to the school website and um, send out your application. So another thing we need to know is um, the document that um, you need the, the documents which you need to take to the um, to the embassies, you need to also ensure that you're not taking original copies to the embassies because they will just trash it. So you need um, photocopies of um, your original copies, like you need to photocopy your documents. So documents you need to take to the embassies are your application form, your passport, as I said before, your passport needs to be at least one year, three months. Um, so you also need to take one recent passport size um, Congo photo. You need um, a sponsorship letter, which is stamped and notarized. Original copy, not photocopy of this. So you need an original copy. So you also need a um, certificate of credit card limit. So you, they don't, um, for Poland, they stopped them. They recently stopped taking statement of accounts. So they need to see the credit card limit. So basically you need a statement of, of credit card. So they do not accept bank statements. So please guys, you ensure you also know this. They don't accept bank statement again. So you also need um, your flight details. You need proof of accommodation. You could also use, make a booking via booking.com um without making a prepayment so you could also um go with travel insurance so for travel insurance um you can do a travel insurance for about 65k above or even lesser um for two years depending on um where you get your travel insurance from and also another essential thing you need to to to, to know when going to the embassy is getting the official letter of admission you need the official letter of admission from the university. Uh, this would also be presented um, to the interviewer at the embassy. So after that, ensure you are having 80 euros handy for the application fee. So these are the documents that are being needed when um, going to the Polish um, embassy in Abuja. Any questions, guys? Are we together? Uh, please, uh, at what point will you come in aside when we start packaging all these documents and stuff like that? At what point will you come in to assist? Okay. Uh, aside from this conversation we're having and you spelling out everything for us. For me, I am, I am, I'm, I'm always open. I'm always open and um, you can always um, reach out to me. I would advise um, as, you know, what, what to do and what not to do. So I could help guide you with the admission process, help guide you with the visa process and everything. So I'm always here. You can reach me at any time. Okay then, okay, thanks. Perfect. So do you have any more questions, guys? Not at all. So let's uh, forge ahead. So now the visa processing, I'm basically I'm trying to, uh, give us the step-by-step -step process on how um, coming to Poland works. So I started with getting your documents ready, what you need to know, um, what if you're applying for a BSc, applying for a master's, then after that, um, you getting the admission. After getting the admission, the student visa, 
Then after the student visa, we are talking about um, the visa processing. So after the application has been accepted by the consulate and payment has been made, you need to, um, to know that you're going to be given a date um, at which you need to come get your, um, your passport. So basically the visa processing um, time is said to be about two to three, um, 21, sorry, 21 days. That's about um, two to three weeks. So you need to wait for this um, time to elapse before you go back to the embassy to demand for your passport. So sometimes it's um, positive, sometimes it's negative. So this you also have to bear in mind. However, if it is negative, you need um, to, to, to check out why they denied your visa. Basically the um, Polish embassy would inform you as to the reason why they, did, they denied your visa. They're going to give you a copy of your denier. So if your statement of account or your credit card limit is not up to the standard, they are going to explain this to you. So you have the opportunity to appeal for, it, um, for the visa. So you go and reapply again by submitting some additional documents. And I, knew, I, I know so many people who I was able to assist um, who went through this process and they're in Warsaw today. So they got denied um, the first time and um, they had to appeal. And then um, after appealing, they were able to get the visa. So another thing you also need to know um, why doing this process is you have to legalize your documents. So after you're done um, applying for a visa or either before you apply for a visa, you must legalize your documents. So this has to be done in Abuja, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And um, for some of the people I know, for some of the people I did for, they paid, uh, they had to contact an agent because they didn't have the time to go to um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So they, they had to contact some form of agent that um, assisted them in um, doing this. And um, some of them had to pay 70K or even lesser than that for them to, to get their documents legalized. Now, we also have documents that needs to be legalized. You have um, your first degree certificate. So a photocopy of that needs to be legalized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, your WIAC results, your transcript, and also your birth certificate. So these are the documents that you need to um, legalize in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Are we together, guys? So yeah, yeah, yes, yeah yes, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Good. together. So um, all these are just the information we need to know when I'm applying for um, admission in Poland and the uh, visa and everything. So the study visa could also be um, a minimum its duration for one year, and uh, it is also very, very, very important that as a student you apply for a residence permit. Of course, yeah, you can stay in the country with your visa for one year, but then what happens after your visa expires? You won't be able to do some certain things. So you need a residence permit as for you to be able to work, as for you to be able to um, fit in, into the system. So that's just all I have to say, guys. So uh, I would appreciate any questions you have. Um, just keep... Um, just bring in, bring in the questions and let's hear them. Um, I can answer this one. It's been asked by Swagalicious AJ Baby. Hmm, nice name. She said, "What of in the event of the what of in the event that one doesn't have the national population based certificate?" Ah, uh, yes, we can actually do a national uh, population based certificate. I did mine uh, recently. I did it in two thousand nineteen. Um, you can actually do it anywhere. I did mine in just, although I was born in Ibadan. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's population census. It's, it's an office. Eh? It's not yeah. like where you give, they give that to you. Mm -hmm. So you, they, um, you can do yours in uh, Abuja. So the population census office, you just need to give them your details of your birth and uh, your birth certificate details. And they will uh, help you prepare one and print it out. So I have, I know somebody in the group, his name is Keynes. He was the one who did mine for me. I was in Belgium 
for and he did all those certificates for me. It's yeah. something you can get done. You don't need to use affidavit. Affidavit nowadays in Europe is not respected at all. Yeah, it's before. not at all. It's, it's seen as illegal now. Mm -hmm. So it's better you just do the certificates there in Abuja or wherever you are. Or you can meet one of us in the group that can assist you with that. It's not expensive it also. It's not that expensive. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for that. Basically, anyone could do an affidavit from the comfort of their home. Uh, his name is, is Kinsley. He's in the group. Uh, if you are part of our WhatsApp group, you will see him there. But uh, if you're not, try to be so that you can uh, meet with him. He works in the ministry. So anything, anytime I have any ministry issue about birth certificate, foreign affairs, and anything, I always contact him. He did it for my um, my mother-in-law here and the family. That was what they were used to use. That's what they used to submit to the government here. He did it for me, he did it for my wife, he did it for everybody I asked him to assist with. He was in the ministry, so he knows how all this thing has been done. And mostly, he can also help with your certificate. If you need any certificate that needs to be signed in any embassy in Abuja, so it's not expensive, he will help you do it. So what do you think is the, um, is the range? I mean, in, when it comes to amounts, you know, for, this, for doing this? Um, it depends. It depends on what the uh, embassy actually takes or uh, the foreign affair, because normally what it does is you, uh, it, it tells you the exact amount, mm -hmm. which you can also find out because it's going to bring the receipt to you. But yeah. it can tell you, uh, because it comes all the way from just to Abuja, it can tell you my run is 20,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so because I know, I know a few people who, who are in Warsaw at the moment, um, one of them did his for about 70k using an agent. So yeah, yeah using an agent. So he why another person did for about 20, 120k. So it all boils down to the person you meet and them um, how you are able to bargain for this. Yeah. Affidavit, I will say it once again, affidavits don't work anymore in most European countries. Some are some still are set to Estonia, no way. Most country I know, no, they need the certificate. So you can actually do it in Abuja. It's not a big deal. Um, sorry, what about police reports? Not all country asks for police reports, actually. It's it, not Canada anyway. It's just Canada that asks for police reports that I know of. So coming to Europe, I don't think Europe, they ask for police reports. It's just um, when you're going to Canada, care about, yeah. Europe, Europe they don't ask for police reports. Any more question, please? Let's ask all the questions. You guys didn't ask about the application fee and the payment of anything so that you can get an oversight of what you are, you should be spending. Um, the, uh, I don't know about how, um, how it works, but from, what, um, from, from previous information that I gathered, there was something about having a document concerning you know, health status, like, I don't know, general health status that you get from a particular hospital. I, I heard that is much needed, but I don't know how true this is. So. Yeah, that is like also a travel insurance, you know, they need to confirm that you're healthy and everything. Okay. Um, they have a question, uh, Sogalicious asks, do you need to pay a particular percentage of the fee before you begin the embassy process? What um, percentage of fee are you speaking about? I feel this is what agency collects. Because um, that's, you're, you're talking about, <laughs> you know, paying to an agent. Yeah, no, no I don't think you have to. You don't pay any percentage. You or do you mean percentage, percentage of school fees? For school fees, you can, you can pay for one semester or uh, for the school fees. You can split it. For the school, that's WSB University in Poland. So you can pay per semester. So as soon as you pay for the first semester, 
um, the, the school would give you the letter um, at which you would use to go to the embassy. So you only pay 80 euros when you get to the embassy, which is for the application fee. So this is what you pay when you take all your documents to the embassy. So you have to ensure that your documents are, are intact and correct. And you don't need to take fake documents to the embassy. These people, they know that we do a lot of things like that. I'm sorry to say this, but uh, it's not nice for you to take such documents. So you, when doing your um, statement of um, uh, credit card, you need um, someone who actually has that kind of document and also, um, what is it called? So you also need to go with, um, one second, sponsorship letter. You don't need to forge any sponsorship letter. So you need to go with original sponsorship letter. They need to see that this is original and also it is stamped and notarized. Yeah, 80 euros is um, 47,000, 47, yeah. But you don't need to go in Naira, you need to go with um, euros. And also, and also um, in, in, in this euros aspect, you have to double check. Um, going to the embassy, it has a year. You need to know the year. So uh, for some, um, I think for some of the people that went in Pung, um, went recently, they used uh, 2013 or was it 2016? It's written in the euros. So you need to know this as well. You could Google that out to know what the, number they need or what year of euros they need.